Because sitting still and not doing something when you're not disciplined, when you have self-control, which is something that you have to wrestle and form and forge over time. Nobody walks out in this industry and has self-confidence, self-control, and responsibility in the beginning. If those, those characteristics and those traits are developed over time. Losing money, making money, losing money, making money, learning what you're doing wrong, trimming all that stuff that is problematic. That, this, this is not a, a, a hard business to be profitable in, but it's a hard business to be organized and disciplined in. Because there's so many things that could take you right out of consistently profitable and wreck you right away. Because it's you as a person, you're a human being, you have emotions, you have psychological weights placed on you because of relationships inside this industry and outside this industry. And the more people you allow in your circle of influence, be it social media, your family members, your co-workers, the more you allow that in, the more likely you're going to be placed in pressured circumstances to perform when there's no need to. There's no need to. But when you step out there in social media and you have other people telling you what you should and shouldn't do, and you give these people that have no real control over your life, if you do it wrong, they're not going to pay you to make your ends meet because they wanted you to do something like it's a UFC fight or it's a sporting event. Perform for me. Fuck you. Go watch somebody else do that shit. You don't need to do those things for those people. You're running a business. Does the, C does the CEO of Netflix go out and go on social media? Hey, what should I do today? <laughs> They're not doing that. Believe me. Trust me. Look at what they've done. They don't do that. Okay. They make their own policies and right or wrong, they're going with it. But they're not, they're not letting even their customer base tell them how they should do things when they should. You as a trader, you're you incorporated. You have to be in control of everything at all times. And you can't let these opportunities that will cause you to do reckless things to invite you to do the most ill-advised things while risking money. That's like you would never jump out of a perfectly working airplane, but hey, the girl that you love says she wants to do it and she wants to have a moment in life with you. Now you're con you're contemplating it. You're scared shitless, but you're still contemplating it now. Man, if I don't do it, what is she going to think of me? When it should have been, honey, that is extremely brave of you. And I hope you respect the fact that I don't have wings and I don't want to be up there challenging the outcome of me opening that parachute and then opening and carrying me down safely to the ground. I will watch in the safety of how you do that. And I will applaud you when you land safely. <laughs> okay. But I'm not doing that. And you shouldn't fear their response. They shouldn't push you into that. But what's really going to happen? You're going to be worrying about whether or not you do this or don't do this and how they're going to think, especially if you're dating them brand new in a relationship. You'll do anything. You'll fight a guy you know damn well you probably get your ass beat by him, but you can't look like a weakling in front of her. Get some beer muscles, some liquid muscles. Go to the, go get to the bar. And get you know. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to deal with this guy later on night before the bar closes. So let me get some liquid courage in me, and that way, if I do get my ass beat, at least I'm numbed up. <laughs> you can't have that mindset in trading. You can't do that. Now, my son didn't go to those extremes, but I'm just talking because you know I want to have something more interactive than just simply saying my son, who has a video game fetish, that he thought that he was going to be able to segue right down into this and treat it the same way. When you're not making a living, you're not building wealth playing a video game, and you're not losing your home, your livelihood, your life savings when you lose a game, when you lose a video game uh, tournament. Okay, you'll have a big deal. It's ego and it's pride. That's it. But in this, you could lose more than you have put in. 
things can go wrong real quick, especially in today's climate. All the things that's going around the world, man, it could cause real quick sudden market movements and your stock loss didn't do a good enough job. And now, where are you going to get that money from? If you're trading with real money, live funds, it can take more than you have. If you present the opportunities for it to do so, hey, perfect storms happen all the time. So, I tell my son, I said, listen, think about one and a half percent. Because if you can grow in understanding that one and a half percent is what you can lose, that's the most you can lose, what should you do going forward? Find a way to chew into that one and a half percent. Now, does that mean you go out tomorrow and try to make one and a half percent? Or do you have to do it today? No. But think about how that fits in your life cycle as an employee of a working company right now. You're gainfully employed. You're only making 400 hours a week as a teenager. You want to grow. You want to be able to move away from the necessity of having that and make your own money. Half of that with one trade and it didn't even go to where you thought it was going to go. Just a small little move. Do you see how that's rewarding? He's like, I never really thought about it like that because I, I just thought it was not enough. I was expecting you to say, okay, we, you, I want you to make this much. I said, no, did I tell you that today? No. But in your mind, you were thinking, dad's going to need me to see this much in a return and this, that. And, and all those things were in your mind while you were doing each one of those executions. They weren't there. He said, yep. And that's exactly what everybody does. That's what makes it hard. That's what happens with these guys on YouTube. Some of them are honest and say, you know, this is not easy. I got to get out here and I got to worry about this and worry about that. Right. You're making it harder. <laughs> I love watching them. It's like you know, a gladiator. You're getting out there and you're doing something ass backwards. There's no war, but you're going to go out there and take on a fight. You want to be able to show the world that you can be a gladiator with everybody else having the benefit of being a heckler. Talk shit to you. And that's in your head. And anybody that says it's not in their head is full of shit. So that, that, to me, you're inviting more difficulty. I promise you, every one of these YouTubers out there that are live streaming that can, that can be profitable, they would be so much better if they weren't live streaming. And I'm not just saying you know, they shouldn't do what they're doing. I'm saying that there's a way that we as individuals, as humans, we compound the difficulty. I know I did. When I was a younger man, I tried to do a whole lot more than was necessary. But my son was successful today in identifying that $244 when he makes $400 after taxes for a whole week of income. Working in a place that he doesn't want to be at, around people that are conceited, self-centered, entitlement-minded. They look at him. They don't know that he's my son. They don't know how we live and what we have in our bank accounts and how we can live and do whatever the fuck we want to do. They don't know that about him. They see him as just some teenager, the equivalent of somebody that would be in a McDonald's. And, you know, give me my shit. So he's he's felt that now. He's felt it. He knows what it feels like and he doesn't like it. And that's exactly what I wanted him to feel. Because now he doesn't have a college mindset not that he ever had. He doesn't have a working man's career mindset. There's nothing wrong with that, but I didn't want my children having that. Because when you have that, you are owned. You are absolutely owned. You are not independent. You have to be given permission and you're scheduled. Show up here, perform this job, better do it to my expectations or I'm getting rid of you. That's not what I want for my kids and that's not what you should want for yourself or your children but the only way for them to appreciate the the necessity that needs to be really enforced with work ethic and studying is let them taste that shit they have to taste it saying you don't want to have a job for your you know for the rest of your life you don't want that you don't want to do that trust me you don't want that son it's just going in one ear out the other because they have no real experience doing it. 
but when they see it and they live it and they can't be with their girlfriends they can't go on a road trip with that mom they can't do those things because they have a schedule to maintain truth be told god's honest truth there's been many times where i just wanted to tell this boy go in there and tell them you're done i'm not working today i'll be back for my check when whenever it's supposed to be but if i did that i'm not helping him i'm not helping him prepare himself to be able to deal with stress conflict resolution work past something and also defer what he wants to have and what he can have and much more than what he's aware of now to defer that because he has to learn a skill set that impatience factor as a teenager is still very very heavy in him and because we've homeschooled him he has a different sense of freedom where his girlfriend and many of his friends were stuck in that go to school at this time and when you get out of school, you know, you got to do homework or go to your job. And he's had pretty much freedom. Now, maybe homeschooling isn't a thing for you. Maybe you can't do it. But if you can, you should. But everybody has to have an em employment of some kind, whether self-employed or working for someone else. And today he understood that a partial that's more than 50% of what he's earning right now with no real effort. No real effort was really needed to do more than half of what he makes. And I told him, I said, I'm not saying that that is good or bad. I'm just saying, what do you feel about it? And when you didn't answer like I wanted him to, I told him, I said, do you not see that that is beneficial for you to not have to work so much? in terms of time and you have to deal with anybody and you got that what happens if you just did two of those per week and it didn't go to your full target you didn't take the full position off but you had something like that happen two times is that not better than your full week income yes so why is that not something to start with because I was listening to you and I thought, no, 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 no. Why is it not enough? Because because I want to make a lot of money. Right. Everybody does. Everybody listening to me right now wants to make a lot of money. Some of you have made a lot of money and you want to learn how to make a lot more. But you have to start somewhere and you have to have some kind of humble beginning and humble beginning is not an embarrassment. It's nothing to be embarrassed about. And this is the reason why I tell you, stop inviting social media fuckwads into your career. You're at the early stages. Why would you invite someone to tell you what you should or should not do when they brought nothing to the table as a alternative with proof that what they're telling you to do is going to work? But it's human nature. Just like the water cooler in the morning when you get to work. You want to get there early, not because you love your employer. You want to get there so you can bullshit with your coworkers and listen to the shit that they're going to talk about. You want to hear them bitch about how their wife didn't let them go to the game. You want to hear them bitch about how they had to do yard work. And that way it reminds you, hey, I'm not the only guy that has to go through that stuff. Somebody, else, all the guys that are living, you know, another household, another neighborhood, working in the same place I am, they're going through the same stuff like me. So I'm part of the herd. No, there is no herd mentality. You are an apex predator. You're outside the herd. You're picking these motherfuckers off. You don't want to be a part of the herd. You have to think differently. You have to behave differently. Everything in a herd gets consumed. Their food. Now, if you want to walk around like a sheep, like cattle, and waiting for your time to get picked off. And you're welcome to do that. And I told my son, I said, what are you? What are you? Are you a sheep? Or are you a wolf? What's it going to be? Because you can exist for a long time in this life. As a sheep going to work. Letting someone tell you it's time to go over here. It's time to go over there. And you'll look at them as, oh, they're a good shepherd to me. They provide a good life. They give me a good job. I got a good job. 
fuck your good job. I don't want your job. There is no job out there that I want. And none of them is good enough for my son. None of them are good enough for any of my sons. I don't want them working for anyone. I want them to be able to write the check that they want every week. Based on their own efforts, their own steam. And managing the risks. And knowing that they may not get the win that they wanted. They may not pan out. They may have a loss. But it ain't going to cause them to go on tilt. And just completely wreck themselves. But you don't, you don't know what it's like to think about those things in the beginning. The only thing you're thinking is all the upside. And the ones that are conscious about the risk, that keeps them from wanting to do anything because they're afraid. And that's where he's at right now. Because he put money in out of his own pocket to do these resets. And he felt like that that was recklessness. And it was. And he doesn't want to do that whole thing all over again. And be reminded of it didn't work for him. It didn't work for him. So I said, there's a way to do this. And it's going to be a lot harder now for you because you have this mental scar tissue, which is exactly why I was trying to teach you the way I was teaching you. So that way you wouldn't have these things. Just like when you are listening to me now in these Twitter spaces, just when you're watching those videos on YouTube and I'm talking about the things that are outside the chart that you're going to have to deal with, whether you like it or not, they're conversations that you need to have. Preferably before you get to that situation that I'm talking about, because many times you're not going to have the skill sets or the coping mechanisms to get you through it unscathed. You're going to hurt yourself and then you're going to go back and listen to it. Be, oh, I wish I would have watched that video. I wish I would have heard that. You heard it. You're just in denial. You didn't listen to it because you thought you were going to be the exception to the rule. And you're not. All of us are human. All of us have frailties and issues with us. Mine a lot more than some of you. But all of this can be managed. But you got to start with a very, very small, low-hanging fruit objective and be content with a little bit in the beginning. Because here's the thing. What happens if you could only just make $250 per trade? Think about it. What happens if that's the best you could arrive at Every trade that you take, the best you could get is 250 bucks. Is that a failure? Now, some of you, especially the young men, be like, oh, pfft, come on, man. I ain't doing trading if it's, it's just that much. <laughs> That's exactly how I thought about it, too. In 1992, that Christmas, I'm sitting there thinking, man, I, I, I got to at least, I got to at least make $500 per trade and I would not accept anything less if it was a 400 hour win or I got stopped out and it was $375 I looked at that as a loss in my mind I treated that as a losing trade and I was programming myself to expect and demand my full pull and anything less was a failure now who was I to do that a dumb shit somebody that had no idea what he was doing, and I was brainwashing myself into thinking that profitability in any measure was counterproductive, wasteful, insignificant. And that's what you're doing probably with a lot of things in trading.